Another NFL week is in the books. Now, I'm not going to talk about it for that long, as there are still 16 games to predict for this week. So I don't want to get too in-depth of what happened this weekend. Antonio Brown looked a little bit off, but the Steelers found a way to win. Are the Bears, Browns, and the Bills, are they going to be tanking this year? Those three teams are 0-2. Or at least just among the teams 0-2. Teams that are 0-2, like basically besides those three I mentioned, the Redskins, Dolphins, Jaguars, Chargers, the Saints. Is there any hope for these 0-2 teams? I kind of want to go in depth on these teams a little bit. Now, everyone was hyped up on the Redskins this year. Kirk Cousins is back with the new contract. You sign Josh Norman in the free agency season. You draft Josh Dotson, a key wide receiver to compliment to Sean Jackson and Pierre Garçon. Although Pierre Garçon has not really been a factor for at least the last two years in Washington. But Josh Norman has been getting burned by Antonio Brown and Des Bryant so far. And who does he play this week? Who is he most likely going to cover? Odell Beckham Jr. And we all know how that ended last time. Could we expect a repeat performance of that? Or do you think Josh Norman can finally get back to his groove? What what was really the major problem, at least in my opinion? I honestly believe that being on the Panthers, it overlooked Josh Norman's true talents. Now that you put him on a team like the Redskins... It just shows that Josh Norman is one of the most overrated players in the NFL. Now I don't. There's no hatred towards it or anything. It's just it's just facts. I mean, just think about it. the Panthers' defense last year. Probably one of, if not the best defenses in the NFL. I would say probably at least the third best defense. And just now that you're look at the red on the Redskins. They would have thought that signing Josh Norman, they would have been in Super Bowl contention. The truth is, it's not. I mean, think about it. Let's just say we put Adrian Peterson on maybe the Lions. Would you assume the Lions would get back to normal form? Or what if we put, what if we put Andrew Luck on the Titans? What if we put Des Bryant on the Saints? What if we put Julio Jones on the Dolphins? You can't just assume that those players are going to be more better than they were on their old team. Because it's th- right now it's probably just the lack of chemistry and basically just the untimeliness of the schedule. I mean, if we pull up the Washington Redskins schedule coming up, Their next three games after this one, the Browns, Ravens, and the Eagles. Now these are plenty of times for Josh Norman to get back to his groove. And then the Lions on the road. Those next four games, those could be the games that Josh Norman can get back to form. So it's too early to question whether Josh Norman being on the Redskins is an expensive mistake. Right now it's looking like it is, but there's still some time left to determine that maybe it wasn't bad after all. Let's also hype up the Monday night game on December 19th against the Panthers. You know he's going to be emotionally into this game. He's most likely going to be covering Kelvin Benjamin. So that'll be an interesting one to see come December 19th. Alright, now is there hope for the Dolphins? Honestly, probably not. I mean, you sign Arian Foss in the offseason, you're able to draft Laramie Tunsil... But you still can't. You still can't get anything going. I mean, they could have had a chance in Seattle, but Kenny Stills dropped a touchdown pass, a for sure touchdown. And plus, Arian Foster he's probably not even going to play this week because he's been dealing with an injury lately. And 
And they didn't really stand a chance against New England. I mean, they were competing with them a little bit, but they just couldn't get the job done. They couldn't find the ways to get it done. And Ryan Tannehill hasn't looked so bad this season. But the Dolphins need to get a win together. Maybe a win this week can get the momentum going. Right, the Jaguars. Now, many people thought the Jaguars could draft their way into the playoff this year. I mean, going with Jalen Ramsey, going with Miles Jack, you would have thought the Jaguars should have drafted themselves in the playoffs. And they could have easily done that. However, it could be something like this. The offense just can't get going right now. I don't know what the deal is in Jacksonville. I mean, you signed Chris Iber in the offseason, but he hasn't even been able to play yet. So we'll see what happens in Jacksonville. All right. The Colts. Now, many people thought that Andrew Luck, with the new contract extension, he would be back to original form. And the truth is, he did. Andrew Luck is not that bad at all. I mean, I think he's been doing great so far. He did really good against in Week 1 against the Lions. Week 2, he didn't do too bad, but he just had to play the Broncos' defense. And plus, Andrew Luck's defense is not supporting him. They didn't support him in Week 1. And that's why they lost, because of that defense. Week 2, it's his offensive line that's letting him down. So Andrew Luck... Andrew Luck really has to put the team on his back, but his offensive line needs to support him. We'll see what they can do this week against the Chargers. Let's see, the Bears. Now, the Bears have just been being plagued with injuries just the last several years. <coughs> I hate when that happens. <coughs> anyway... Brian Hoyer is right now the quarterback for the Bears. Should the Bears just tank and see if they can just try to get to Sean Watson or maybe a solid pass rusher on defense? Because the Bears just be known for their defense, especially with Mike Ditka. <coughs> but now, when we're in the early 2000s in the 2010 era, in this decade, it's like the Bears just don't know who they are anymore. And I know Bears fans are just getting really frustrated. However, we'll just have to see what happens with the Bears, whether they decide to tank or they try to win some games. Because the Bears are just a broken down team right now. And so are the Saints. I mean, Drew Brees is just really trying hard. He put the team on his back in week one. They lost against a two-point conversion call. That was beyond Drew Brees' control. Week two... The defense just let him down late in the game as they allowed a game-winning field goal at the gun. Maybe this week, Monday night against the Falcons, we will see as it's hyped up to be the 10-year anniversary of the first game in the Superdome after Hurricane Katrina. Well, maybe not necessarily the anniversary, but 10 years ago on a Monday night. So this is hyped up to be an interesting game for the Saints. A very emotional one indeed. So on to the Week 3 predictions. Now I'm going to make this really quick because I've gone on as long as I have originally anticipated. I don't want another 20-minute video. Before I do that, let's read a comment from someone from last week. Someone said... I don't really want to expose the person, but... It says, do not bother watching this crap video if your team is not Arizona, Denver, Carolina, New England, or his beloved Falcons, meaning me being a Falcons fan, then your game is a crapshoot. This guy watches ESPN and repeats what he hears. The only thing he brings new is the word crapshoot. Never mind. I'm able to contain myself. Unlike other people. Anyway, on to the week three predictions. Texans versus the Patriots. Now this is going to be hyped up to be a great game. Patriots probably having to go with Jacoby Brissett. I mean, really good idea from the draft. Jacoby Brissett in the draft in the third round. Because let's see who would be really playing quarterback for the New England Patriots if they did not.
it's only hard to imagine who it would be. They probably have had to sign someone like TJ Yates. So they actually worked out today, but didn't make a deal at all. Or they would have had to find someone from the back to squat. Okay, I'm going to pick the Texans win this one. I just think the Texans have so much firepower on offense. I mean, I've talked about those receivers and DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller. Look, I expect Brock Oster to completely use those to his advantage as New England has pretty much a young defense out there. So I'm going to pick the Texans to win this one. Cardinals and Bills. Not too much about this one. The Bills have been really struggling. In fact, they just fired their offensive coordinator last week. So I'm going to pick the Cardinals to win this one big. Look for that defense to have a re-performance of last week. Raiders and the Titans. Hey, what do you know? We got a crapshoot game. Woohoo! I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Raiders in this one. I just think they look really stronger than Tennessee. Look, Tennessee had a kind of a decent win against the Lions. I just think the Raiders are trying to recover from the kind of the heartbreaking loss against Atlanta. So I'm gonna pick the Raiders to really rebound this week. Redskins and Giants. Now, this is gonna be a really interesting game. Josh Roman and Odell Beckham Jr. Could we see a performance of last year, or at least last time when they played each other? I think they're going to draw at each other a little bit. Look for that in the game. But I'm going to pick the Giants to win this one. I just think Eli Manning... I honestly think Sterling Shepard's going to be the X-Factor in this game. Not Odell Beckham. Browns and Dolphins. Crapshoot! This is about as much the crapshoot as it gets. I'm going to pick the Dolphins with one in a really low-scoring game. Let's go with 10-7. to 7. Ravens and Jaguars. Now, the Ravens are shockingly 2-0, but they've played the Bills and the Browns. Probably two of the worst five teams in the NFL. In fact, at the end of the video, I'm going to rank my top five worst teams in the NFL. Although it could be obvious. I'm going to pick the Dolphins on this one. No, oh, sorry. I'll pick the Ravens over the Jaguars. My bad, I'm going way too fast. Lions and Packers. Now, the Packers are really trying to rebound after... Just a really horrible offensively performed game against the Vikings last week. And Aaron Rodgers throwing, throwing interceptions inside the last two minutes of the game and fumbling three times. The offense couldn't get going. I'm going to pick the Packers to really rebound in this one. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to bounce back. I'm going to go with four touchdown passes against this horrendous Lions secondary. Broncos and the Bengals. Crapshoot. It's only a crapshoot because not because these teams are awful, but these teams are so talented. But I'm going to pick the Bengals on this one. I just think that defense is really going to get to Trevor Simeon. I honestly think this will be a highly defensively tested game, so I'm going to go with about 20 to 14 in favor of the Bengals. I like AJ Green to be the difference maker. Vikings and Panthers. I just think the Panthers are going to this easily handle the Vikings, especially without Adrian Peterson. Sam Bradford kind of has a bruise on his hand, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Although I just like the Panthers' defense in this one. I just think they're going to really get to Sam Bradford in this one. And whoever they're going to play, running over it's Gerard McKinnon or Sam, Matt Asiata, I just think the Vikings' running game is going to be a little non-existent in this one. So I'm going to pick the Panthers to win by at least 14 points. Plus, I think the Vikings are a little too overly confident after that upset win against the Packers last week. Rams and the Buccaneers. Guess what? Crap shoot! I'll put the Buccaneers in this one. I just think the Rams are going to continue to struggle. They may be 1-1, one one, but they have yet to score an offensive touchdown. In fact, the Rams have only scored 9 points in 2 games. So I'm going to pick the Buccaneers to win this one. I think they can actually win by double digits in this one. All right, 49ers and Seahawks. Now this, this, no, I will not say it is what it is. However, the Seahawks are in panic mode. They need to get something going. And I think they're going to get this against the 49ers. I like the Seahawks to, I like Russell Wilson to easily make his comeback. I think we're going to see Russell Wilson like we used to. I'm going to pick the Seahawks to win big. Jets and the Chiefs. This is going to be a great one. Highly defensive tested. I'm going to pick the Jets, though. I think the Chiefs are a little 
too overly emotional about last week's loss against the Texans. And plus, I think the Jets are just rolling this this year. I think they're going to roll into the playoffs. That's what their mentality is. I'm going to pick the Jets. Chargers and the Colts. You know what we got in this game. A crapshoot. Both these teams are 0-2. Both these teams are really going downhill. But I'm going to pick the, the Colts to win this one. I just think Andrew Luck is going to find the receivers he needs. In fact, I like this game to actually probably be in the high 40s. Let's go with 42-38. to 38. Both quarterbacks are going to throw for about five touchdowns apiece. I'm willing to bookmark that. But I like the Colts to win this one. Steelers and the Eagles. Now I'm going to make the Steelers in this one. The Eagles have done really well. Carson Wentz is looking so well. But he's played the Browns and the Bears. This is kind of his first real test. And I think I just think the Steelers are going to win this. Even though if Carson Wentz plays really well, I just think Antonio Brown is going to be the difference in this one as he struggled last week. I like him to get back to form against this Eagles secondary. Bears and the Cowboys. I want to pick the Cowboys because the Bears, they're just getting plagued with injuries left and right. I think the Bears probably should actually consider tanking in this one. I think they should just tank for the rest of the year as well as the Browns. I want to pick the Cowboys. Now, finally, the Falcons and the Saints. I'm going to pick the Saints in this one, and although I think my Falcons can really win this game, I just honestly think that they don't do well in the division games. We saw what happened in Week 1 against Tampa Bay. As they allowed James Winston to throw four touchdown passes. I, and I, plus, I think the Saints are going to play with such heart and emotion, especially especially this is going to be the... This is going to be the 10 years ago after Hurricane Katrina, their first game. I think it's going to be a repeat performance, although I don't think it's going to necessarily be a blowout. I think the Falcons will compete hard in this game, but I like the Saints to actually win this. I like it to be about 31-23. Last thing to do it for your week two, week three NFL predictions. As far as the five worst teams in the NFL, it's obviously the Browns, the Bears, Dolphins. Bills right now, it's obviously the Redskins. Those are the top, those are the five worst teams right now at least. Could any of those five teams make a comeback and win this week? We'll soon find out. Anyway, like and subscribe to the channel. So close for subscribers. I can almost taste it. I mean, it, it doesn't matter whether if like some of you just create random accounts and just subscribe to it. As long as I get it, that's all I care about. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, I will see you next time. Have a great day, everybody. Follow me on my sports Twitter account at JB Talk Sports. Also, share this video with your friends. Put me on the map. Have a great day, everyone. See you next time.